Hirokazu Koreeda is a name that has been on the lips of many a folk when discussing Japanese film in the last 10 years. Surprisingly, in spite of all this press, the accolades, awards, and honors bestowed upon Koreeda and his films, not to mention the numerous interviews he's given to the English-speaking press, we've only covered one of his films to date. For the full story on Koreeda's early years as a documentarian and his transition into a unique style of dramatic film, we recommend that you check out our video from two years back covering Our Little Sister. A lot has happened between then and now, however. So let's do some catch-up and then examine why Shoplifters, the film we're discussing today, is poised to become another career-defining moment for this director. By the time Our Little Sister made it this side of the Pacific, it had already been out in its home country for more than a year. This means that it had already taken home all of the dozen festival and academy awards that it would accrue, including Best Picture at the Japanese Academy Awards in 2016. While the preceding years had seen the release of such important films for Koreeda as Like Father, Like Son, Our Little Sister inaugurated something of a golden period for him, which has continued until the present. The following year, 2016, saw the release of After the Storm, an even more sedated film compared to Our Little Sister. This project, which we intend to cover at some point in the near future, revolves around a deadbeat father attempting to retain what tenuous connection he has with his adolescent son. While nowhere near the critical darling that was Our Little Sister, Koreeda kept rolling out at an accelerated pace, releasing two more films within the following two years. 2017's offering, The Third Murder, was something of a switch-up for Koreeda. Rather than focusing on a microcosm of family drama, he turned his film lens this time to a courtroom during the proceedings of a murder trial. The change shocked some, but paid off big time, as in early 2018, Koreeda and company brought home six more wins from the Academy Awards. This success and change would in turn feed into the following project, released about a year after the third murder. This time around, we would follow a different type of criminal, less to do with murder, more to do with petty theft. And instead of looking at the tense drama of a courtroom, Koreeda would return to more familiar territory with the cramped living spaces of a family in turmoil. These two facets find a perfect marriage in the bleak, affecting portrait of modern poverty known as 2018's Shoplifters. Earlier in February, the film made its way to American shores thanks to distributor Magnolia Pictures, who gave Shoplifters a brief theatrical run before putting it out on DVD. This means that our American viewers have the opportunity to check out Shoplifters just ahead of the Japanese Academy Awards, where it marks yet another of Koreeda's threatening sweeps. Also of note going into the end of February is that the American Academy Awards have given the film a nomination for Best Foreign Film, the first film from Japan to even compete in this category since 2008's Departures. We won't be getting too far into spoiler territory with this video because this is definitely one film you're going to want to check out for yourself if you get the chance. And considering what the film has the chance to achieve in the near future, there's no time like the present. Shoplifters begins with an innocent enough air. The setup is simple. An elderly woman, Hatsue, played by the late Kirin Kiki in one of her final roles, lives in a tiny house with two of her children and two of her grandchildren. Osamu, the son played by Lily Frankie, is not unlike Koreeda's prototypical deadbeat dad, while his wife, Nobuyo, played by Sakura Ando, who you'll recognize as the antagonist in Love Exposure, is more no-nonsense, working hard for scraps at her dry-cleaning job. The elder grandchild, Aki, is actually the grandchild of Hatsue, but unrelated to Osamu and Nobuyo. Aki makes a living working at a striptease parlor, where she seems to be flirting with the possibility of taking her earnings and moving on to a new life. The other child, Shota, is a vagrant who commits most of the shoplifting for the family, stealing items they can either consume or sell for cash. It's at this point that you're likely realizing something. We said this was simple, and yet that sounded extremely convoluted. Well, by that we meant that the plot is simple, but that the real meat of the film has nothing to do with the plot. Rather, it's about all the messiness we just described concerning the characters' individual lives, motivations, faults, and how all of these elements interact between the whole family. Things only become more complex when Yuri is introduced, she being a very young girl that Osamu and Shota discover near their home. As it turns out, Yuri is regularly left outside at night. Osamu, concerned that it's too cold for her, decides to take her home, 
Nobuyo is upset by this, but acquiesces and decides to let her stay when she realizes that Yuri is being abused at home. Nobuyo can't send Yuri back knowing this, and instead decides to let her become a member of the family. While some of this is spelled out through actual dialogue, most of Shoplifter's utter brilliance comes from how the majority of the film's emotional core is exposed, meticulously and through actions or visuals. This isn't the type of film that deems it necessary to have its characters reiterate what was just exchanged between two characters in order to make sure the whole audience is following along. Wow. What? He didn't stutter once. Instead, it demands that we pay attention throughout and draw our own conclusions. We need to do this because as the film progresses and these relationships are laid bare to us, mysteries begin to crop up. We are asked to question where exactly some of these characters came from, or just what they might be playing at. These questions aren't left wholly open-ended, however. Shoplifters provides us with just enough information for a few satisfactory answers in everyone's case, without ever outright stating that these answers are right or wrong. We're intentionally trying to be vague here for the sake of not ruining anything about shoplifters. Let's put it this way, this is not the film you think it's going to be, but it's the film you want if you think this premise sounds intriguing. It's a visceral examination of poverty, greed, innocence, the lack thereof, and family dynamics in the modern world. It's a story centered on characters living on the fringes of the fringes of society, and it successfully exudes this atmosphere. This is not a hopeful, glamorous Hollywood depiction of poverty, where we get to feel warm fuzzies while we watch one of the most well-paid actors in the world pretend to be homeless. Shoplifters is thus able to transcend the bonds of Hollywood poverty and the tales of hope found there. Instead, it chooses to explore on a more basic level what the ties are that bond us together, family or not. Sex, money, love, the simple act of sharing a meal together. These all become immensely more important in the face of what these characters are up against. For the adults, these actions and topics are approached almost cynically, but also realistically. They need food and money to survive in society. Love is a noble concept. Sex is enjoyable. The children, meanwhile, face the task of coming to grips with these new concepts. They don't have the adult perspective, seeing as how they're being raised in these circumstances, and this is their norm. Thus, only later do they begin to really question the falsehoods or truths that the parents offer. By approaching these general but hard-hitting questions from multiple generations, Koreeda and his team were able to craft a wide-reaching portrait of the modern family in dysfunction in the widest strokes possible. This may be a story about one exceptional family, exceptional in their situation and how they get by, but the lessons they teach us are applicable to all families living today. It touches on the struggles of being an effective parent, a good child, a wise elder, a functioning member of society versus a total misanthrope, and more. By using his tried-and-true method of setting up a scenario and a group of characters and then merely allowing them to exist, Koreeda has struck another home run with shoplifters. There is no need here for the sudden insertion of drama out of left field in order to jerk tears from the audience's eyes. The film instead feels real, as though it takes place in our own world and as though these are people we could encounter without knowing their story. Maybe that's ultimately the point that whether we're strangers or family members, we can always stand to learn more about our fellow men and women, that we can be compassionate to them and try to understand their struggles, that we can lean on one another and find common ground whether happy or sad, that we can laugh and cry and live together no matter how bleak the world might seem at times, and that no matter where we are, we will always be capable of going home or building a new family. Shoplifters will likely strike some viewers as too depressive thanks to these messages being buried beneath a darker tone. However, for those willing to dig deep and consider what this film is trying to tell them, and perhaps more importantly, those willing to truly consider how the film has affected them, it may prove to be one of Koreeda's masterpieces. In some ways, it's the harsh reality to Our Little Sister's beautiful dreamlike atmosphere, where both films ultimately bear similar messages about the importance of human bonding and family. One thing is for sure, and that's that Shoplifters is not the kind of project that you'll soon forget. Poignant and thought-provoking, Shoplifters is worth a look, so check it out and let us know below what you think of Hirokazu Koreedo's latest gut punch of a film. <laughs>